Hey everyone, don't forget to enter the Bigfoot Case Files and Bigfoot Encounters narrated giveaway that was posted on October 1st. The link to the three-hour marathon is in the description of this video. To enter, like and share the video, subscribe to all four of our channels, and comment the secret word in the marathon video. Please see the Bigfoot Case Files community page for an itemized list of the prizes you could win, as well as the official rules. Thank you for participating. We wish you all the best of luck. I live in the Smoky Mountains. I heard one drinking from my creek at 3 a.m. one night when I woke from a deep sleep and felt like I was in danger or something was very wrong. I went to my back door and I shined a big flashlight on my creek, which runs through my back field and is always full of deer. In the six years I've lived here, I have never seen a bear. I saw something furry drinking at the creek 90 yards from my back door and thought, wow, that's a bear. Then it stood up and I saw big hands that went past its knees. It had smooth, dark black fur and about 12 inches of mahogany-colored hair hanging off its body. It was probably about 4 feet across and 8 feet tall, and it looked very muscular, like a bodybuilder. It leaned its head back and let out a scream that shook me from my head to my feet like a stereo turned up too loud. I could not believe what I was seeing, so I shone the flashlight on it again. It screamed for 30 to 45 seconds straight without stopping to catch its breath. It was the loudest sound I ever heard, maybe other than an air siren. We moved back to Ohio in 1991. The night was warm, like most nights in August. The corn was all grown up. My cousin, her friend, and I were riding around in my 66 Chevelle. On County Road 1281, we began our journey down the hill. The road goes down into a small valley and Buck Creek flows through it. It goes over a set of train tracks and then up the other side. I went across the tracks and began going up the other side. As I reached the top, I saw eyes that were shiny, not yellow like a rat or a deer. I was interested in this because it was different. I saw a dark shape in the trees as I got closer. The road is made of dirt and my speed was only about 15 miles per hour. In the headlights, these eyes looked lime green. I was about 40 yards away from this shape. After that, it stood up. The hair on its chest was shaped like a salt and pepper shaker. It just walked through the bushes and down to the edge of the cornfield to look at us. It went into the corn after about 20 yards. It now sidestepped into the corn when it went into it. It looked at me like, don't mess with me. As he went off into the field, he stood about two feet above it. He was about seven and a half feet tall. It was very clear to me that I saw his legs disappear into the corn. Huge calf muscles and the hair was very thin, black and about four inches long. The foot pad was dark gray color. He had very broad shoulders. I felt like a dream, like it was moving slowly. That was too much for my brain to handle. After it went over to the corn, I looked at my cousin and her friend. Did you see that? Please tell me you saw that. They were crying when I told them to go home. To this day, she won't talk about it or even admit that it took place. It changed everything about my life. It took me 15 years to go outside at night again. This happened between 12 and 2 a.m. in August of 2007. We decided to go night fishing for catfish in the Kern River Canyon because it's too hot during the day. I decided not to go too deep into the canyon, but to the first or second canyon off the highway. We arrived to Lower Rich Bar around 12.30 just after midnight. All three of us were armed just for protection like we always do. We hauled our fishing gear and started fishing with chicken liver as bait. By 1.30, we caught at least six catfish. We were happy that we didn't really have to use our flashlight since the moon was out. As we were talking, we heard this roar. A roar so loud that we felt instant fear as it vibrated through our chests. I have heard many animals, but nothing like this. Then we all noticed across the river by a tree, this thing stand up, all black, tall, nine to ten feet, muscular. We all froze. It proceeded to push the next tree to it into the river. The tree snapped and echoed through the canyon. I grabbed my knife and cut my fishing line. My friend and brother, also in a hurry, brought their poles to cut their lines. As I'm finishing up with that, it jumped into the river and was swimming, more like walking through the water, towards us. At that moment, I dropped the poles, pulled out my gun and keys. I told the guys to run to the car. Understand that this river, the Kern River, have killed many people trying to swim across or drown. 
We all ran to the car, leaving our poles, the fish and stringer, and tackle box. We drove off, and I must have been going 70 miles per hour. After a couple of miles, we came out of the canyons towards Bakersfield. I slowed down and uttered the first words. What the F was that? We were in shock, but asking that, it snapped the guys back. My friend said that the 45 wouldn't have done a thing. We laughed, but we're all still in shock by how big it was, how it was swimming through those rapids, like it was an indoor swimming pool. It was like the river current wasn't an obstacle to get across. It shook all of us. I'm a registered nurse at the hospital here in town. My encounter happened on approximately November 17, 2020. As COVID was in full swing, many of us had to take our turns working the COVID unit. My home unit had high-risk patients, so I was swabbed twice a week to try and prevent COVID from coming onto that floor. Prior to leaving work on Tuesday morning, the 17th, I was swabbed for COVID prior to going home, with the plan to come back to work that evening at 7 p.m. As I was ready to leave for work that evening, I received a phone call from the hospital. I was told I could not come to work because my COVID swab that morning came back positive and I would need to quarantine for the next seven days. My problem was that my father-in-law, who would be considered high risk if he contacted the virus, was staying at our home during that time. My wife and he were not in the house when I found out that I had the virus, so I formulated a plan and called her. The plan was that I would get out of the house and go quarantine at our cabin at Rough River Lake, Kentucky. She brought my father-in-law home, and we met in the parking lot at the grocery store. I waited out in the parking lot in my pickup while she went in and bought enough groceries to last me during my quarantine and came out to my pickup, and she put the groceries in my toolbox so we had no contact. The next morning, my wife and father-in-law went and got tested and were negative, thank goodness, because I would have been the one to have given it to them, and I didn't want to have harmed them. The drive from Owensboro to the lake was about 56 miles, and it was really dark that night. I remember seeing only a sliver of the moon earlier, but by 9 p.m. or so when I made my drive, it was just really dark with no moonlight that I could see. On the way to the lake, I had the radio off, as it's usually on, as I was in deep thought about the whole situation. As I drove on, I came to realize that my biggest fear would be laid to rest one way or another in the morning when my wife and father-in-law would be tested for the virus. I then thought about how I could actually make the most of the quarantine by calling people I hadn't spoken to in a while and working on my book, which I was working on at the time and has been published since. I had been in deep thought coming through the dark wooded area. I came to an area that had a row of trees along the road to the left coming off a ravine. When I passed the end of that, there was a second ravine with trees about 30 yards back that came to an end roughly 100 yards further than the closer ravine. What initially caught my attention was the yellowish-white eye shine of a deer off to the right side of the road. I started to slow up as this really nice white-tailed buck walked right onto the road in front of me and just stopped in the middle of the road. He was not looking at me and paid no attention to me coming toward him. He was gazing to the left side of the road toward the end of the second tree row and ravine I had mentioned. As I got within about 20 yards of this deer and had almost come to a stop, I looked over toward where the deer was watching. You know how your car headlights cast light off to the left and right of the vehicle? Well, in that cast of light, I picked up what I would describe as very large orange eye shine about four feet off the ground near the end of this stand of trees. It was coming from the back side of the trees around the tip or end of the tree stand, so it was facing me at about the nine o'clock position when I picked up the eye shine. I can only describe that I saw a dark creature moving like a spider about four feet off the ground with a large head with eyes almost as large as silver dollars around six or seven inches apart that shined orange. When I looked back at the deer standing on the road before me, it suddenly took off in the direction it was facing into an open field. I then saw this spider creature turn toward the running deer and started to quickly move toward it. That's when I about dropped a biscuit as this thing rose up onto two feet in a fluid motion to take flight after the deer. I rolled my window down to see if I could smell anything, which I did not, but I heard in the trees to the right side of the road where the deer had initially come from what sounded like a large branch breaking, so I hit the gas and got the heck out of there. I feel that there was a creature on the right side of the road in the woods that pushed this deer toward another creature at an ambush point, and I came along at the wrong time. 
As fast as this thing took off in an open field, I have no doubt it would catch up to that buck. I was 15. It was the second day of buck season. It was around 7 a.m. It was snowing, so the sun wasn't out full, like usual. I heard what sounded to me like a damn bull running through the thicket. There was a deer run just next to it. My stand was about 25 to 30 yards from where the deer run shot through the thickets. I had clear shots all around. Our stands were built 360 degrees around two giant oak trees. Anyway, I was seriously waiting to see a damn Brahma bull come plowing through this scrub, so I sat on the bench there and figured whatever it is, my chance of getting a buck were gone for the next few hours. So I leaned back against the tree and put my thirty odd six across my lap. My dad insisted we always loaded heavy with hollow points. My dad reloaded all-out ammo. I'm not sure what grain he used in the shells, but I know you couldn't buy them with that much grain powder in them. Anyway, all of a sudden, everything just goes silent. You know that eerie silence you hear when it's snowing, like the snow absorbs all sound? No more birds, squirrels, nothing. There was no sound at all. Like Mother Nature hit the mute button. Then I saw movement. It was about six doe trying to sneak by. When they got near the thicket, my jaw dropped. These doe jumped straight up in the air, and their legs were running in mid-air as well. Four does sprinted away when their hooves hit the ground, but what exploded out of the thorny thicket was these two massive Bigfoot that were on top of these does in milliseconds, grabbed them by the throats, and snapped the deer's necks as if they were breaking twigs. These monsters were both reddish-brown. Their faces were something out of nightmares. I froze. I did not move a muscle. I just watched as they threw these does, probably about 150 pounds each, over their shoulder like I would have a book bag from school. And then they walked right under my stand and stopped. Then what happened next, it was all I could do to not pee myself. From right under me came this unholy roar that seemed to go on forever. The tree stand was vibrating from the sound waves. Then, when the roar stopped, I heard the other go like, Hoof. and then they walked away with their prizes over their shoulders. As they walked, I watched them, and it was as if the trees swallowed them up and they were gone. Next, I heard running toward my stand, but it wasn't heavy. It was my dad. He ran to me when he heard the roar. He was running towards me with the intent to shoot anything to save me. My dad did three tours in Vietnam. He was running as if he was going into battle. I didn't recognize it when I was 15, but I did after training in the Navy. When I saw their faces, I became terrified because it triggered a memory when I was like five or six, and something with that sinister face and teeth would stare through the window in my bedroom of that cabin. I was too terrified to run to my dad. I couldn't even speak. I was frozen in fear. My mind must have blocked it out until I saw them that day when I was 15. My dad had to climb to me in the tree stand and assist me to get down. It was as if my brain locked every muscle in my body. I couldn't even speak for about ten minutes or so. I was in shock. That roar right under me sent a fear through every fiber in my body and soul. I've had two encounters that I'm certain of in north-central Vermont. As near as I can recall, they happened in 95 and 96. I'm not 100% sure about the years, but I know that's pretty close. I'm certain that they happened in back-to-back -back years. The first time, I actually saw the creature. I had prepared a spot for sitting. There were two types of hunting, sitting or stalking. This particular day was good for stalking, meaning that the weather was miserable. There was a heavy wet snow falling, one degree warmer, and it would have been raining. If I were an enthusiastic hunter, I would have been tracking a buck and hoping to catch him lying down, but I'm not. I didn't feel like getting soaked and dragging a deer up out of the swamp. I don't really hunt for the kill anyway. I do it for solitude. It's kind of therapeutic for me. Back to the point. I had been sitting under a blue spruce tree all day, its foliage protecting me from the weather. Near the end of the day, I was starting to think about leaving before it got dark, when a buck came walking along the game trail. This was about 50 yards from where I was sitting across a small field. I pulled up my rifle and got in my scope, and some instinct told me not to shoot that deer. And to be completely honest, that instinct might have been my brain asking, do you really want to drag this thing a mile through the woods in the dark in this weather? 
Anyway, I tracked this deer through my scope until it disappeared into the tree line. The very moment that deer stepped out of sight around another spruce, a Sasquatch stepped in from the other side of that tree that the deer had just passed. He took one or two steps and paused to look straight at me. I was looking back at him through my scope. My crosshairs were centered on his right eye. He was freaking massive. I simply could not wrap my mind around how thick he was. To give it some scale, when he came out of the tree line, he passed by an old fence post that I know was about four and a half feet high. This guy was more than twice that, and I would put him at least nine feet, probably more. He turned towards me, only his upper body, his feet, remained pointed in the direction of the deer. I don't know what he was thinking, but I was thinking, if you come at me, you're going down. I remember keeping my scope on his eye and saying under my breath, don't do it, buddy, don't do it. Then he turned back and followed the deer. January of 2017, I moved to Pikeville, Eastern Kentucky. The apartment complex I moved into was an old abandoned coal mine hauler that had been converted, which had an old coal road that went up a mountain and then swung around it with acres of woods. Whenever I'd sit in the picnic area to have a cigarette, I would notice at around 10 o'clock at night this howling out in the nearby hills which I now say sounded almost identical to the Ohio sounds, I'd hear one howl and then maybe 30 seconds later, there'd be another one from another hill that was maybe a mile or so away. And then I'd hear another and another. And you could listen to these call and responses for hours without end. Well, by April, I was trying to get back in shape and I loved to hike. So I decided I would get up around 6 a.m. and hike up that coal road and back. As I'm hiking up and it got darker and darker up that road, I noticed this strange bird whistling at me. It was strange because of how loud it was, and I mean the pitch was just so loud and I thought to myself, that's a damn big bird, and I whistled back. My grandpa was a Green Beret in Vietnam who partly helped raise me, and I've been in the woods of Illinois and Wisconsin my whole life and never encountered much that was weird, although my grandpa did and told me stories here and there, but I wasn't afraid of much. Well, I'm hiking up, and not only is that whistling getting closer, and I mean close to where it was like 10 feet from me in the tree line of the woods, I turned on the flashlight on my phone and couldn't see anything because it was so dense. But then I noticed this bird was keeping pace with me. Then small pebbles started landing in front of me as I walked down. At first I thought it was just loose rocks sliding down, but then it became apparent that something was tossing them right at my feet. At this point... I'm about 300 feet up this old road in the pitch dark, so I gently tossed one back, and then a big one, maybe a half-pound rock, flung right at my feet. I froze. Now I gently yelled out, Is someone out there? And that bird whistling started up even louder than it had been before. I don't know what overcame me, but I started belting out the St. Michael prayer in Latin, and then the Hail Mary pretty audibly, and not wanting to turn back continued up that road. I don't know what it was, but as I reached it with my rosary in hand, I got this bad, bad feeling that something was really wrong here, and I spoke out loud and said, I don't know what you are, but I'm just walking here, and the pebble tossing got more intense, and I could now hear things trudging through the woods at paces that I knew weren't people. So I turned around and calmly began to go home. I thought that this could be a bear, or well, hell, a damn Bigfoot. How loud the trudging was? combined with the whistling and pebble tossing, I wanted to run the hell out of there back down into the holler. But if you think that there's an animal, you just don't do that. And I don't know why, but something told me not to turn your back on them. So I'm trying to make it down while keeping an eye on what's behind me, and the moments that I look down the road towards the apartment complex, something just leaped from the side of the mountain onto the road and then down into a bunch of thickets. And I stopped and yelled, What the F was that? If that were a man, he'd have fallen 400 feet down a vertical fall and broke his neck or something. I mean, it was steep and covered in thickets and thorn bushes. And how loose the rocks were? I mean, if you didn't get a footing, you'd just fall on your ass and slide and tumble down. Whatever this was got its footing and slid and trudged down with great volume, like stomping through a huge snowdrift. I kept thinking to myself that this is not how I'm going to die. But this point, I felt with all of the noise that there had to have been five to eight things in the woods stalking me. Honest to God, 
I knew that I was being followed and scrutinized that I had pissed something off with my presence. The pebbles were being tossed at an alarming rate, and there were by now eight or so big birds whistling at me from about ten or so feet in the woods. Branches were snapping, and it was like multiple freight trains just trudging through those woods. This is a steep hill. I mean, it is steep. I cannot imagine men being able to do this without falling down, and the only flat surface was the road. When I got about a hundred feet down from the apartment, I don't know what overcame me, but something told me to just book it for the farm lamp, and I ran like hell until I got to it and spun around. I stood there watching and couldn't see anything. They had stayed up there, but they were still making all sorts of noise. I don't know what I started, but after that, I felt I was being watched whenever I was outside in that hauler. If I went outside my apartment by my car to smoke, pebbles would start getting tossed right at my feet in the parking lot from a mountainside, or a big bird would start whistling at me, and we had huge streetlights shining onto our parking lot. And as this is happening, I'd take out a big old flashlight and shine into the woods. I did get eye shine a couple of times, but couldn't make out faces of what they were, which creeped me out to no end. I went up the mountains a couple of times in the day and found what appeared to be tree breaks, a couple of structures, sticks in the road. Now, I don't know, these sticks were just laid ever so carefully in the road. What creeped me out was that they appeared when I was coming back down. On one hike, I got dizzy on the way home. Now, I do have epilepsy, but this was different. I'm hiking down the road, and suddenly I got dizzy. The sound in my ears was like TV static, and I wanted to take my shirt off because I felt so hot. But I laid down in the dirt ditch for a few minutes and just felt drained of everything. I just thought of my mother and picked myself up and forced myself down that road. When I got home, I just collapsed in bed and slept for a good six hours. Now I think, looking back, that that was the side effects of infrasound. But then one night, my roommate and I went out to one of the picnic areas to smoke and talk, and as we were making it back toward my building, the ground shook to the point I felt like I'd lost my footing, like a giant was stomping in front of us, and let out this scream that I've never heard before or since. It was like a woman mixed with a bear, a lion, and a witch, all in one terrifying scream. I jumped like three feet and just ran up a picnic table, and I could not look at it. We were stuck in that parking lot until the sun came up. Every time we made an attempt toward my building, it would scream and we couldn't find it, couldn't see it. We had the sensation that it was behind this ancient white oak tree, but we made five attempts to go home and it was not having it. But when the sun began to rise, we made our sixth attempt and then heard something just trudge up that mountainside in time that no man or woman could. I'm talking a hundred foot vertical hike that this thing scaled in seconds and just kept going until we saw trees moving at about 500 feet up. We never went that far out at night again, and that was a lighted parking lot picnic area in the middle of an apartment complex. After that, I'd smoke at night at the door, dealt with the whistling and pebbles tossing. I'd give it the finger and go inside. I moved to Louisville in June and never went back. I'm not afraid of the woods or anything, but I definitely will never go in them again without a 30-30 or something bigger. The power just in the lungs of this thing could have killed us if it wanted to. I don't know what we did that night. We weren't messing up in the woods or nothing, and I feel like I was being stalked for having gone up there. But other residents went up there, but not at night. I have a deeper respect and appreciation of the mountains and the woods. Since all of this, the guns I have and carry with me in the woods are enough to take down a bear. But yeah, like I said, I will never go in the woods unarmed again. My name is Ben. Back in 2015, I was a junior in high school. My buddy had called me to see if I wanted to hang out and see his new toy. The toy was a Jeep Wrangler YJ that was abandoned. Even more interesting, it was abandoned by a gentleman that later that same year went to his friend's house and shot him. He had some issues, I guess. So whilst we went out there, we swapped with my brother's truck to mine and proceeded to meet them in the woods. So this is Sweden, Maine, where we found this kind of middle of nowhere. So we get to the Jeep, and my friend and my brother's friend go out in the Jeep, leaving my brother and me with my pickup in the clearing. We noticed it was very quiet where we were. Right about then is when a gumball-sized rock landed between us. We looked at each other and played it off. Both kind of bothered. 
We agreed to go toward the entry of the trail to get out of there. I guess we felt safer. Well, when we got a little further down the trail, my brother pulled over. It was getting dark, probably like 6.30 to 7 in May. When I jumped out, I looked at this tree to admire the sky. I saw an entire flock of birds fly out of this tree. I proceeded to slowly drop my head, looking down the tree the whole time. When I got to the middle of the tree is when I saw something. I saw a figure in the woods, left arm and leg hidden by the tree, looked as if its left palm was against the tree. It was rocking slightly. It had a long arm that I could see on the right side and a big build. I couldn't see the feet, but the head, shoulder, and torso and leg on the left was clearly visible as a silhouette. It was rocking slightly left to right, and I could see it breathe. I looked at my brother, and he was frozen looking at it. I asked him, what is that? His only response was, get in the truck. My door was still open, so I kind of dove backwards into it. My brother quickly had started it, and the clutch already out and fishtailed away. I couldn't bring myself to look backwards, but we were spooked. There was an interesting situation with a set of lights behind us upon our escape, but I'm not sure what to make of it. We called the friends that we were leaving, so they either had to ditch the jeep or drive it back to the house. Oddly, they sounded distressed, but they agreed to meet on the trail. We flew back down the trail, driving way faster than anyone should. We came up to them and stuffed the jeep in the woods. What caught my attention next was they ran, and I mean ran, to my truck. Keeping my hand on the hood the whole time, I slid up against my brother as to make room for them. We drove out of there, and my brother and I, not wanting to get played, asked them why they were so worked up. They stated to us that they had gotten stuck for a moment, and whilst working it out of the mud, something slapped the side of the jeep and rocked it side to side. It was too dark for them to see anything under the heavy tree canopy and in the night. It certainly was a wild time. The only other thing was some vocalizations the year prior that sounded exactly like the howl captured in Maine. That's my story. My name is Luanna. About October 1983 or 84, it was a Friday evening. My sister Lisa, her fiancé Randy, and myself went out. We lived in a small town with nothing to do, so the normal thing was to ride the back roads and drink our beer. We went down Pabama Road. It was a road with no houses and hardly ever traveled. We had to stop for a pee stop. Randy went into the woods on the driver's side. Lisa and I went behind the pickup on the passenger side. We saw a shadow in the front of the truck, and we both thought it was Randy. We looked up and was shocked, scared, spitless. It was a tall, white, shaggy Bigfoot walking on an angle across the road. Randy came running to the truck. We were all shocked, asking, what the hell was that? We couldn't get out of there fast enough. The thing was at least seven to eight feet tall, not in a hurry, walked in front of the truck with the headlights on, did not seem startled or afraid of us. It looked white with dirty, shaggy, clumpy hair. Its arms were very long and hung forward. This has been decades, and to this day, the three of us know exactly what we saw and swear to it. We have all gotten teased about it when telling our story. We know they, Bigfoot, really are out there. My name is Mike. I had a childhood experience when I was eight at a dude ranch in Nebraska. It was at night and probably 60 feet away from me. It was a full moon with lots of stars over the summer. I did not see its face, but all I saw was a silhouette. The encounter was approximately two, maybe three minutes. The day before my encounter, one of the girls ran into the boys' section, scared as heck. She said she saw an ugly black face in the bathroom window. The next morning, we checked out that side of the building. I was only eight at the time, but the window seemed pretty high off the ground, and there were handprints which were large and strange as far as the thumb location. A couple other things happened at the dude ranch. Nothing truly bizarre, but interesting. The horses were always jumping the gate for some reason. When I saw it, I was asleep and just woke up, feeling like I was being watched. Stood up, looked, and saw it. At first, I thought it was a counselor trying to scare us, but then I noticed the arm length, way too long for a human. Then I noticed hair all over the body. As I watched, it started swaying, which was really scary. After two to three minutes, it just walked down the hill to an overgrown hauler. 
I was surrounded by other kids and was unable to react, yell, or anything. Decades later, I live in Georgia and have had some strange things happen. During the day, I was just glancing in the woods and swore I saw two black legs. It was really thick vegetation as it was about two months ago. It was walking one direction and then stopped and the legs turned toward me. I think it realized, oh crap, I've been seeing. It took off so fast it was a blur. Twice we've had two loud smacks on the house. A week ago, both of our TVs, me and my sons, just went out. No power loss, just both TVs at the same time turned off. I called a cop one night and told him I saw a partial look of a guy in a ghillie suit. Didn't want him to think I was nuts. He suggested a game cam. He looked around, but being night, saw nothing. Another two times we heard what sounded like someone beating their arms against their chest, but it was really loud. Thanks for hearing me out. I live in Kansas along the east border. My first encounter happened in 2007 in July. I decided to fool around outside at around 9.45 to 10 p.m. As I was fooling around in the pasture, I began to hear bipedal footfalls just inside the tree line to myself. From just inside the wood line where the footfalls were coming from, the most guttural, piercing scream rang out in response to me. When arriving to the house cresting the front porch steps, my dad threw open the front door asking rather frantically what that sound was. Me, still excited, stuttered out an answer of, I don't know. My second experience was August 23, 2015, around 3.45 p.m. I recently got off work and was heading out to check the trail cams for the upcoming deer season. While walking down the trail, I got the urge to use the restroom, so I stepped off the trail to pee. Directly after stepping behind the tree, I heard, in the direction of my camera, a tree sounding like it was breaking and falling over. But it was odd. It cracked and creaked, paused, cracked, then snapped, and then had a long pause and then a giant thud. I thought to myself that was weird, didn't sound normal, so I finished my business and moved to my camera. Roughly 25 yards in front of my camera, just out of line of the lens, was a sycamore tree six inches in diameter, broke off three feet from the ground and shoved back into the ground upside down. Then the most oddest smell came about like a skunk bathed in the mud of a stagnant pond. I found all this quite odd and out of place and felt as though I wasn't alone, so I quickly got my camera and got back out of the woods. My third encounter, me and my little brother were out fishing at the back pond and we were having a good time catching and releasing bass. We were carrying on when out of nowhere a rock that was about 10 to 15 pounds came flying and crashing out of the wood line about 30 feet in the air and dropping into the pond. Me and my brother both watched it crash into the water, then looked at the woods, then looked back at each other and began packing up. And he yelled, what was that? I told him, doesn't matter, time to go. I then got over to his side in the truck and told him, let's load up. He at first wanted to stay until we made eye contact and we saw the seriousness I had of the situation. So we got everything loaded and got out of there. The fourth encounter was at 4.42 a.m., January 18, 2023. I was on my way to work when I looked at my clock and then looked back up and noticed movement. After locking onto this thing, it looked at my truck, but its eyes were a foot and a half taller than the mile marker, six foot six sign, on the side of the road. After that, it proceeded to pick up its pace, take two more steps, clearing the other half of the road, then planting its foot by the sign and jumping across the ditch, which was 22 feet, and landing firmly on the opposite side, then sprinting through a drainage where a tree line used to be that was full of five-foot-tall teasel plants, its arms above the said plants, and getting away from the road. And those are my encounters. Would you like your encounter story told here? Text us your story to 778-227-7588, or email us at bigfootcasefiles at mail.com. We're looking forward to hearing from you.